My very first duas from the Holy Quran. A fun way of teaching your child duas from the Holy Quran. By the Sincere Seeker Kids Collection. Narrated by Brad Grahowski. Our Lord, give us in this world good and in the hereafter good, and protect us from the punishment of the fire. Quran chapter 2, Ayah 201. This is one of the most common dua that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, would make. Many Muslims also recite this dua daily. Allah, the Glorious, talks about certain people in the Holy Quran that only make dua for good things in this world and neglect to ask for anything in the next world, which is better and longer lasting than this world. Then, Allah, the Most Merciful, praises those who ask Him for good in this world, which includes all good aspects of this world that please Allah, including having good health, beneficial knowledge, good family, wealth, etc. They make dua for good in the afterlife, too, asking for paradise, which would include happiness and safety in the hereafter. There is a good balance between making dua for both worlds, and they ask Allah to save them from the punishment of the afterlife and to avoid anything that could lead them to it. These people do not disbelieve or forget about the punishment of the afterlife for those who commit evil. Guide us to the straight path. Quran chapter 1, AS 6. This is the most frequently recited dua. It is recited at the beginning chapter of the Holy Quran in Surat, chapter Al-Fatiha, the opening in verse 6, which is recited in every prayer a Muslim performs to Allah, the Glorious. In this dua, we ask Allah, the All-Powerful, the All-Merciful, to guide us to the path that leads us to Him, the path that would earn His pleasure, the path of those who earn His favors and blessings. My Lord, increase me in knowledge. Quran chapter 20, Ayah 114. Unlike our Lord's other creations, we were gifted with intellect and knowledge, and we are above other creatures because of that. Gaining knowledge is a wonderful thing, and there are many virtues to gaining knowledge. Beneficial knowledge leads one closer to Allah. What we were given from knowledge is very little. Our knowledge compared to Allah's knowledge, the all-knowing, is like a drop in the ocean. We should always be eager to seek knowledge and humbly ask Allah to increase our knowledge. We should recite this dua to Allah, consistently asking Him to increase us with more knowledge so we can be better people. My Lord, have mercy upon them as they brought me up when I was small. Quran chapter 17, Ayah 24. The Holy Quran places a very high significance on the need to respect and take care of our parents. Allah commands us to be obedient to our parents in the Holy Quran right after commanding us not to worship anything apart from Him, which shows the importance of being good to our parents. Our parents are the largest doors to Jannah, paradise, so being good to our parents is the easiest way to enter Jannah. While repaying our parents for what they did is very difficult, we can make dua for them, asking Allah, the All-Merciful, to forgive them. As children to our parents, we have the opportunity to ask Allah to forgive them, reward them, and raise their rank in Jannah, even after they pass away. We can be a source of Sadaka Jiraya, continuing charity, to them where our parents can still get rewarded and forgiven by Allah after they die if we make dua for them. So we should ask Allah to forgive our parents often. My Lord, build for me near you a house in paradise. Quran chapter 66, Ayah 11. This is the dua that Asiya, peace be upon her, made to Allah. She was the wife of the most oppressive pharaoh in history who made people worship him. Asiya was a very righteous and pious woman who attained perfect iman, faith, according to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. He stated that she is one of the four greatest women that ever lived. She was known for her generosity. After the pharaoh learned his wife believed in Allah, the glorious, he wanted to disgrace her. 
so he took her to the desert to starve and torture her while others were laughing at her. At that moment, Asiya made a prayer to Allah, asking to be near to him and asking for a home in paradise. It was at that moment Allah then opened the skies and allowed her to see her home in paradise. Then Asiya smiled and laughed in joy. Then the pharaoh ordered a huge boulder to be thrown to her, but before the boulder touched her, Allah raised her soul back to him. Asiya is a great role model. She displayed that no matter the situation you are in, as long as you stay firm to your faith and uphold your dignity and honor, Allah will always find a way out for you. Sufficient for us in Allah, and He is the best disposer of affairs. Quran chapter 3, Ayah 173. When Prophet Abraham was about to be thrown into the fire by his community, he recited this dua, and Allah made the fire cool and turned it into a garden for him. The fire did not harm Prophet Abraham at all. This special dua was also recited by Prophet Muhammad and his companions when armies came together to attack them. People came to Prophet Muhammad and his companions, peace be upon them, and told them that armies have gathered and are on their way to attack them, and that they should be scared and watch out. There were very few Muslims compared to the armies that were on their way to attack them, but the Muslims recited this dua, and their faith increased and remained firm. With this dua you acknowledge, remind yourself, and affirm that Allah is aware of what is going on with your situation, whatever it may be. You realize He cares about you, and He is enough for you. You acknowledge that everyone, including yourself, depends on Allah, and Allah does not depend on anyone. You remind yourself that no one can help you the way Allah can, because Allah is the only one that is all power and is in control of everything. You recognize that Allah is all you need for protection, support, and help. You acknowledge that Allah is the one you can trust and depend on, who will never let you down. You can say this dua whenever you are feeling desperate, scared, sad, confused, or need something from Allah, whatever it may be. There is no deity except you. Exalted are you. Indeed, I have been of the wrongdoers. Quran chapter 21, Ayah 87 Prophet Jonah, Yunus in Arabic, peace be upon him, was a prophet of God who was sent to call out to his people to worship the one and only God and call them to obey God's commandments. But his people were stubborn and rejected his message. After many attempts to convince his people to follow God's commandments, Prophet Jonah became frustrated and angry at his people for not believing in his message and left his people without the instructions or permission from God. Prophet Jonah, peace be upon him, boarded a ship, unaware that his people finally believed in the message after he left. The ship then got caught up in a storm and shook the ship. The people in the ship realized that they would drown if they did not empty the ship and lighten the load, so they threw out their belongings into the ocean. But that was not enough. The ship kept shaking. They realized they needed someone in the ship to jump out so that the rest of the people would survive and not drown. So the people of the ship decided to draw lots, and whoever's name is drawn would have to jump off the ship to make the ship lighter. Prophet Jonah, peace be upon him, was drawn three times. Prophet Jonah, peace be upon him, understood that this was from God the Almighty. So he jumped off the ship. After Prophet Jonah, peace be upon him, threw himself into the sea, God caused a big fish to swallow him without tearing his flesh or breaking his bones. Prophet Jonah realized his mistake of abandoning his people without the permission of God. In three layers of darkness, the depth of the night, the darkness of the bottom ocean, the darkness of the whale's belly, Prophet Jonah, filled with total despair, turned to Allah, prostrate to him, and cried out to him, reciting this dua. 
Prophet Jonah, peace be upon him, acknowledged that Allah is the only deity worthy of worship. Then he declared the greatness of Allah and then admitted his sin, taking responsibility for his action. Then Allah the Glorious released him by having the whale spit him out on the shore. Prophet Jonah was feeling sick, and his skin was peeling off from all the acid from being in the whale's belly. He was spit in a land without any trees. God caused a plant to grow and covered Prophet Jonah with its shade to protect him from the wind and to heal him. Then Jonah's health recovered. Whenever you feel that you are in a tough situation that you want to get out of, you should recite this dua, and Allah, the Glorious, will find a way out for you, just like he did for Prophet Jonah, who was in the darkest place one can get into. He was in the darkness of the night, in the bottom of the ocean, in the belly of a fish, and God was still able to get him out of the situation he was in. You need to realize that God is the one in control of all things and can get you out of any situation. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, stated that whoever recites this dua is guaranteed a response from Allah, the Most Merciful, the All-Powerful. Our Lord, we have wronged ourselves, and if you do not forgive us and have mercy on us, we will surely be among the losers. Quran chapter 7, Ayah 23. Allah the Glorious told our father, Prophet Adam, peace be upon him, to enter paradise with our mother Eve and eat and drink whatever they wish and live happily. They lived there for a long time. Our Creator, Allah the Glorious, instructed Prophet Adam, peace be upon him, not to eat from this one particular tree. Then Satan whispered to Prophet Adam and tempted Prophet Adam to eat. Prophet Adam slipped up and ate from the tree. After that, Allah asked Prophet Adam to come down to earth with our mother Eve after being in paradise for a long time. Prophet Adam, peace be upon him, immediately regretted his action of eating from the tree and disobeying Allah. He felt bad, and he felt lonely. So Prophet Adam, peace be upon him, made a dua to Allah, which Allah taught him. Prophet Adam, peace be upon him, acknowledged and admitted that he'd made a mistake, without blaming anyone or anything else. Prophet Adam acknowledged that if Allah does not forgive and have mercy upon him and our mother Eve, that they would surely be amongst the losers. Then Allah accepted their repentance, and Prophet Adam returned to the folds of Allah's path and mercy. We are humans so we will never be perfect, and we will continue to make mistakes and commit sins from time to time, which would only harm ourselves. From this dua, we learn that wherever we slip and make a mistake, we need to ask Allah for forgiveness, and we can use these words that Allah taught Prophet Adam to recite. When we sin, if we feel regret, that is a sign of iman, faith, that we believe in Allah. We should immediately take ownership of our wrongdoing and not make excuses or blame others and ask Allah for forgiveness. We should realize that Allah loves to forgive and be merciful to us. So when we repent sincerely, we should always assume that Allah will forgive us. Our Lord, grant us from Yourself mercy and prepare for us from our affair right guidance. Quran, Chapter 18, Ayah 10 The Holy Quran shares a story about a group of young righteous men who believed and worshipped in the one true God. They were living in a society that worshipped idols. Because this group of young men refused to take their society's idols as gods, their family and community expelled them, and their powerful king wanted them killed. The young men tried to flee. They fled to a cave in a mountain without much wealth, food, and resources. They realized that they would either be killed or forced to join the idol worship if they were found. As they entered the cave with fear, they made this dua to Allah, asking Him for His mercy, to straighten their affairs, making it proper, and to find a way out of the ordeal they are in. 
Allah the Almighty then gifted them one of his miracles, causing them to fall into a deep sleep in the cave for 309 years, saving them from their people. You can make this dua when you start something new in life, when you might feel nervous. You can turn to this dua to ask Allah for his guidance and protection. This group of young men believed in Allah and placed their trust in him. So Allah, the Glorious, guided them. So when you place your trust in Allah, he will always find a way for you, no matter the situation you may be in. Our Lord, let us not our hearts deviate after you have guided us and grant us from yourself mercy. Indeed, you are the bestower. Quran chapter 3, Ayah 8. We use this dua to ask Allah to keep our Imam, faith, firm and strong after he has guided us, so our Imam, faith, doesn't get weakened or lost. We ask Allah not to allow our hearts to deviate in the wrong direction, which takes us away from the closeness of Allah, where we may not even realize it is happening. When our Iman is high and we feel a closeness to Allah, we can use this dua to beg Allah the Glorious to keep our faith, Iman, high and hold on to that beautiful feeling of closeness to Allah. We also ask Allah to gift us from His special favors mercy that would avoid our hearts from going the wrong way from the path of Allah. We acknowledge that He is the giver of gifts that constantly gives. We should never take our precious gift of Iman, faith, for granted. Many things in this world can lead us away from the path of Allah, and we should try to avoid those temptations and sins and ask Allah to keep our hearts firm and in the right direction. So, we should frequently recite this dua. My Lord, I am needy of whatever good you may send down for me. Quran chapter 28, ayah 24. Prophet Musa made an innocent mistake in Egypt, and the Pharaoh sent an order to look for Prophet Musa to kill him. Prophet Musa had to flee, scared for his life, with nothing on him. He didn't know where he would sleep or eat, had no family with him, and his life was in danger. As he was fleeing, he sat under some shade and saw some people giving water to their flock and two sisters struggling to hold their animals from running to the lake to drink. Prophet Musa walked up to them, asking them what's the matter and why weren't they letting their animals drink like the rest of the animals. They replied that they wanted to wait until the men had finished feeding their animals water before they feed their animals, because they didn't want to mix with the men, and their father was too old to do it. Prophet Musa voluntarily took their animals and went down to the lake to feed the two sisters' animals. Then he returned the animals to the sisters and started to walk over to shade, away from the sisters. Prophet Musa, peace be upon him, wanted to make up for the mistake he'd made in Egypt by doing some good deeds. He wanted to take advantage of every opportunity he could get. Even though Prophet Musa, who wasn't a prophet at this time, had nothing to give, he found a way to help. Whenever you give and help others, Allah the Glorious will help and give you. As he was returning to shade under a tree, he made this dua to Allah. He did a good deed for the sake of Allah first, and then asked Allah to send him something good to make his dua more effective and powerful. He asked Allah to send him whatever good his way, and that he would be grateful, as he is poor and has nothing. After he made this dua, the girl that he helped came back slyly and told Prophet Musa that her father wanted to thank him for what he did. So he went to her dad and was offered a job, food, and even married the old man's daughter, who he helped. We can use this dua after we perform a good deed and beg Allah to send us and bless us with good our way, since we have nothing, and Allah, the Glorious, has everything. My Lord, I seek refuge in you from the incitements of the devils, and I seek refuge in you, my Lord, lest they be present with me. Quran, chapter 23 a. 97 and 98. God has warned us in the Holy Quran that Satan is our clear enemy and warned us from following the footsteps of Satan. 
Satan whispers and tempts us to do things that are harmful and not good for us. Satan has promised to try to misguide us and lead us further away from our Creator. Satan will attempt to make bad and harmful things look like they are good and not harmful to us. We should protect ourselves by seeking refuge in Allah from Satan. There are several things we can do to protect ourselves from Satan and his harms. Reciting this dua frequently is one of the ways to seek protection from Allah. So, memorize this dua and recite it frequently. Our Lord, accept this from us. Indeed, you are the hearing, the knowing. Quran chapter 2, Ayah 217. Prophet Muhammad made this dua as he was building the Kaaba with his son Ismail, peace be upon them. The first house of worship on earth that Allah asked them to build with their own hands. As Prophet Abraham was building this house of worship where billions of people have faced to pray and millions of people have performed tawaf, he was still afraid that Allah may not accept his deeds. This dua asks Allah to accept our good deeds. This dua teaches us to always humble ourselves when performing good deeds and not to assume our good deeds will be accepted by Allah for certain. We should always be in a state of humility when we perform good deeds because we never know if Allah will accept our actions. Some things can prevent people from having their good deeds accepted. For instance, if someone performs a good deed to show off to others and don't do it solely to please God alone, intentions are very important in Islam. We ask Alam to accept our deeds, even though there might be some shortcomings in our actions. While a Muslim should be hopeful his good deeds will be accepted, he also needs to have some fear that his deeds may not be accepted. We should have a good balance between the two, or else we can feel a sort of self-righteousness, feeling as if we deserve to have our deeds accepted by Allah, which is arrogant. We should not let Satan deceive us to think we are entitled to have our actions accepted by Allah. So recite this dua whenever you complete a good deed for Allah to ask Him to accept the good deed from you. Our Lord, we have believed, so forgive us and have mercy upon us. You are the best of the merciful. Quran chapter 23, Ayah 109. In this dua, we ask Allah to forgive us and have mercy upon us based on our iman, faith. We are asking Allah to forgive us and have mercy on us since we believe in Him, follow His commandments to the best of our ability, follow His guidance, and follow His prophet. O Lord, do not impose blame upon us if we have forgotten or erred. Our Lord, and lay not upon us a burden like that which you laid upon those before us. Our Lord, and burden us not with that which we have no ability to bear. And pardon us, and forgive us, and have mercy upon us. You are our protector, so give us victory over the disbelieving people. Quran chapter 2, Ayah 286 This is one of the most important duas in the Holy Quran that every Muslim should memorize and recite daily. We ask Allah, our Master, not to hold us accountable or punish us if we forget or make a mistake. In these duas, we also ask Allah not to burden us and test us as He did the people before us. The people before us had stricter laws, and we are asking Allah for easier laws to make life easier for us. We also ask Allah not to burden us or test us with that which we have no ability to bear. We want the ability and strength to overcome anything we face in this world. Then we ask Allah to forgive our shortcomings and erase and cover up our sins. After all, no matter how much we try, we will still always come up short because none of us are perfect, except Allah. Then we ask Allah to have mercy upon us. Then we affirm that He is our protector and no one can protect or sustain us better than He can. Then we ask Allah to make us victorious and give us the upper hand over the disbelieving enemies who oppose Him. The End